Thank you very much, Typhon, and thanks for doing this uh, long shift in the middle of the night, New York time. Looking forward to the rest of our 18, and I'm excited to present the 18th reason for hope. And this is a big one. The clean energy transition that's picking up speed so dramatically is now creating jobs and revitalizing manufacturing industries around the world. At a time when many countries are struggling with unemployment, income inequality, and other economic problems, renewable energy is providing an exciting new source of job growth and wage growth. Not only is climate action not a choice between the economy and the environment, we see now that it can and it does spur new development, new industry, new innovation, and new jobs. That is an important reason for hope. And the 18th reason for hope, just to summarize again, is that renewable energy is now spurring the growth of new jobs all around the world. So let's take a look. The important new study that was just released two days ago by the United Nations, the Calderon Report, technically called Better Climate, Better Growth, and New Climate Economy Report, uh, summarized in one of its findings this important source of hope. Investment in low carbon energy sources and energy efficiency is a major source of job creation. That's great, and it comes at a time when we need a new major source of job creation. You know, in past economic downturns, we have seen great challenges bring great opportunities to put people back to work. The Great Depression of the 1930s was ended in the United States with the mobilization in the war against fascism. There are many other examples. But now that we have a period <coughs> of slow growth and protracted slow recovery from the recent Great Recession, what a wonderful opportunity to have a major new source of job creation, if we seize it. So let's look at the evidence for why uh, this is such an important stimulus uh, to economic uh, sustainable growth. First of all, these new wind power systems are creating high paying good jobs. This is a high technology uh, industry that is jobs intensive. Uh, and all of the nations that have taken the lead in building windmills, for example, China, are putting a lot of people to work. This is in the United States, in Colorado, where one of these giant windmill blades uh, is on display. They make them there, and they're paying good wages. This is a tremendous new opportunity. Uh, this is in Canada, uh, in Ontario, where they're making parts of a giant wind tower. This uh, is another one of these enormous blades. And look at the facts that are presented in this slide. The number of green jobs or clean jobs that have been listed in the United States climbed over the last 12 months almost 90%. Now, how many categories of good jobs that pay good wages are growing that rapidly in this day and age? This is a tremendous opportunity and a great reason for hope. We're seeing that a lot of people all over the world uh, are getting employment uh, in this new industry. Let me go back to this one because it shows uh, that on a global basis, there are now six and a half million people already who, who work directly or indirectly in the renewable energy sector. And as this transition to the replace dirty fossil fuels with renewable sources of energy picks up speed, we can anticipate that this job growth will also accelerate. The focus has been here on uh, renewable energy uh, jobs here uh, in Salvador, Brazil, uh, the installation of solar panels on the first solar powered sporting venue in Latin America. But it's also important to recall some evidence that was presented in an earlier hour where we presented uh, a source of hope. And that is 
the massive market for retrofitting buildings. Remember, buildings are a source of almost 25% of all global warming pollution because so many of our buildings were built in an inefficient way that allows the escape uh, of, of uh, heat during winter and the uh, escape of cool air during summer. A and the great task of adding insulation, adding uh, better windows, replacing inefficient lighting systems with the new very efficient LEDs, those are all accompanied by the creation of lots of good jobs. Well, we have a big challenge in front of us. In order to solve the climate crisis, we have to retrofit buildings. We have to build all of these uh, windmills and solar panels and install the new energy efficient pumps and piping systems and all of the other advances uh, in energy efficiency. All of them are associated with the kinds of jobs that cannot be outsourced. They have to be performed in the community. So this is the opportunity that many have been waiting for to put people back to work in much larger numbers and get sustainable economic growth in the process. That really is uh, a reason for hope. This is in my home state of Tennessee, where photovoltaic solar panels are being manufactured uh, in Memphis. And uh, this person's job is one of so many millions. In fact, last year, solar jobs in the United States grew 10 times faster than the average growth in jobs overall. Clearly, this is an opportunity. And with the need for many more solar panels and windmills, we can see how many people can be put to work. Again, in uh, Canada, the manufacturing of solar panels is putting Canadians back to work. But it's not only uh, in North America, it's all around the world. Here in the United States, it's astonishing uh, to note that the number of jobs in the solar industry now outnumber the number of jobs in the coal mining industry. That is a sign of things to come. Now, uh, remember that the loss of coal mining jobs has been primarily because the coal companies have introduced these new automated forms of coal mining, and actually the loss of jobs in coal began to start a long time ago. But the appearance of many millions of new jobs in solar and wind and other renewable energy technologies is a fantastic and encouraging sign of hope. This is in Spain. Spain, uh, at the, in the early years of this push to jumpstart the solar revolution, along with Germany, had very generous government encouragement for the rapid adoption of these new uh, technologies. And it also created a lot of jobs, and it is still uh, doing so. China is a special case in so many ways and particularly where renewable energy systems and sustainability technologies are concerned. China made a conscious decision to build more solar panels and more windmills than any country in the world. And it's one of the many reasons why we've seen this enormous internal migration from rural areas of China to the coastal areas that are uh, oriented toward the export of products that are sold in the West, but it creates jobs everywhere these panels are made. In South Africa, this happens to be uh, in Durban, uh, solar projects bring jobs with higher pay on average than other jobs. Now, a, a quick aside, because in one of the films uh, that was, was specially made for this 24 hours uh, program this year, one of the young people asked in the why, why not segment, why doesn't South Africa have more solar panels? Well, they do have some, but the question is a, an important one. And I want to uh, say in an aside that South Africa is an example of a country that is extremely tied to coal, not only because they have a lot of coal, but because the municipalities of South Africa get much of their revenue from the coal-burning electricity 
generating a company that has a monopoly there. And the ruling party, the African National Congress, has an investment arm that's heavily invested in the coal industry. So uh, the young person who was asking that question and making reference to why aren't there more solar panels in South Africa was actually on to something very, very important. South Africa is one of the countries with this fantastic resource uh, of, of sun. It has insulation or constant sunlight uh, to a degree that few other countries do. So yet another reason why South Africa should adopt a faster transition to solar energy is the creation of jobs that accompany the shift to renewable energy. Now here is an important fact as well. In the United States, there has been a particular challenge that all also is kind of a moral <laughs> obligation to put veterans to work and to make sure that those returning from the wars in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan have good job opportunities. Well, the solar industry is employing veterans at a much higher rate than other industries. That is an encouraging sign as well. And it's one of the many reasons why this shift toward renewable energy and the retrofitting of buildings and the introduction of energy efficiency uh, technologies is creating the opportunity to lift up the economy and to provide more opportunities for people who take jobs in the renewable energy industry. For a long time we have known that as we solve the climate crisis and reduce global warming pollution, we can accomplish other benefits simultaneously. Improving health, improving national security by reducing our dangerous dependence on these areas of the world uh, from which the carbon-based uh, fuels come. And now, at a time of economic stress, even though we're in a recovery, the number one challenge economically is to provide more jobs with higher incomes so that the economy can get back to health and have a sustainable pattern of growth that provides dignity to people in the workforce. So what are we waiting for? Another reason for hope is that these jobs can be created by accelerating the transition to a sustainable, renewable energy system that provides hope for the future and jobs for young people and Americans of all ages and people in other countries. The job creating potential of the renewable transition is yet another reason for hope.